There was a time of great fitna, uh, a time of great trial and tribulation during the lifetime of Imam Ahmad, when some of the core beliefs of Islam were being challenged. And unfortunately, there were certain rulers as well of the Muslim lands who had also succumbed to these incorrect beliefs about some of the issues in regards to Islam and the Quran. And what they decided to do was they decided to enforce their incorrect beliefs upon everyone else. So the scholars lined up to debate them, to challenge them, to state how these beliefs were incorrect. And they began to eventually imprison and even torture and kill some of these scholars who would oppose them. And they literally went through all the scholars till the last one left standing was none other than Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal who was a great defender of the proper beliefs of Islam. So the king, the ruler, had called Imam Ahmad a couple of times, tried to convince him. Imam Ahmad had debated the, the people, the scholars, or the intellectuals who were on the side of these incorrect beliefs, and he had defeated all of them in their debates. He had presented counter evidences and made them speechless. They had no response to him. So finally, the ruler one day got fed up with this, he got tired with this, and he said, I am the king. I'm the ruler. I'm not going to take some nonsense from some imam or some sheikh. I'm not going to have him tell me what's right and what's wrong. I'm the ruler, I'm the king, I'm right. So he sends his soldiers over to Imam Ahmed's house. And he says, I want you to chain him up, tie him up like a prisoner. You know, like ma maximum security style. I want you to chain him up like a criminal. And I want you to walk him through. Don't bring him from a side route. Walk him through the center of the town, through the town square, through the marketplace. So everyone can see him humiliated. And then I want you to bring him here. And then we will lash him and we will torture him and we will punish him until he does not concede. So Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal is now chained and he's being brought through the town and everyone's gathered around, everyone's watching, everyone's looking, everyone's gawking, you know, shocked and surprised at what's happening. And Imam Ahmad rahimahullah says, I started to think to myself, Ahmad, what are you doing to yourself? What are you doing to yourself? You're humiliating yourself. You're embarrassing yourself. Allah and His Messenger وسلم, have given you an out. You can say whatever this oppressive tyrant, ruler, whatever he wants to hear, you can tell him whatever he wants to hear. As long as you believe the truth in your heart, you're good, you're fine, you're okay. But why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you humiliating yourself? Do you really want to leave this as your legacy? Humiliation, torture? And then he says, as I was thinking this to myself, I felt somebody tugging on my clothes, like my shirt from behind me. And he said, I turned around and it was a young man. And this young man seemed familiar. And he said, he goes, Oh Imam, Ya Imam Ahmad. He goes, do you know who I am? He said, I'm Abu Haytham. And Imam Ahmad tells us that Abu Haytham was the most notorious criminal of that time in that era. Right, he was like Billy the Kid. Right, so he was like this notorious criminal who was the most wanted man. He was at the top of the most wanted list. And he pulled him, he tugged him, and so when Imam Ahmed turned around, he goes, I'm, I'm Abu Haytham. He said, listen, I steal for a living. I rob people is what I do. And I have been lashed. He said, it is written in the court documents. It is written in the court records and the court documents. You go and you look. I have been lashed 18,000 times. What he meant was, I have received 18,000 lashes because of my crimes. But I haven't stopped doing what I do. He said, I serve shaitan for the sake of the dunya. I obey shaitan. I listen to what shaitan tells me to do for the sake of material worldly gain. But I haven't quit just because of a few lashes, 18,000. He says, you obey Allah for the sake of the deen and the hereafter and the akhirah. Don't you dare, don't you dare ease up on your stance because of a few lashes. Don't you worry about a few lashes. I didn't give up robbing people, doing bad things because of lashes. Don't you dare give up a good thing because of lashes. 
And he said these words to me and he let my shirt go. And the soldiers dragged me on. And that was the last time I ever saw him. But Imam Ahmed said, when he said those words to me, it lit a fire inside of me. And I said, I don't care what they're going to do to me, but I'm going to stand firm. And that's exactly what Imam Ahmed did. And eventually, Imam Ahmed became the reason of the preservation of the proper Islamic beliefs and the defeat of this very corrupt movement. And that's why Imam Ahmed, for the rest of his life, wherever he would sit, whenever he would pray, before he would go to sleep, he would make dua to Allah for Abu Al-Haytham. Rahimallahu Abu Al-Haytham. May Allah have mercy on Abu Al-Haytham. May Allah forgive the sins of Abu Al-Haytham. The moral of the story is, never underestimate anyone. Everyone's got something to offer. Everyone's got a potential. Everyone's got untapped, limitless potential. It's just a matter of realizing that ourselves. And then trying to bring something productive to the table. So don't underestimate yourself first and foremost. Secondly, never underestimate anyone because you don't know what they're capable of. You don't know what good deed they've done.